Alright, you ready? Mm-hmm. <coughs> I didn't think that would you happen. You did that on purpose. I didn't think it would happen. It was on purpose and you know it. Did you say it was on purpose? <laughs> well, well, I did. <laughs> Palooka. <laughs> Stop fooling yeah, around. Yeah, shut up. Alright. And we're live. history of podcasts. You don't even need to tell us. I know it's true. I am your host, Suzanne, and with me is my co-host, Presley. Presley. Right. Well, here you are, back again, yes. ready for more fun. Today is Emily Henry and Keeping Up Appearances. On this podcast, as you know, we are going to talk about a book we're going to loop in a theme, and we're going to keep it spoiler-free. So those of you who are, like, worried, am I going to read the book first? Don't worry, baby. We got you. Yeah, if you're anxious. Why are you anxious? Answer us now. Please tell us why you're anxious succinctly. I don't want a book. I do want a book. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> now I feel anxious. Don't say that. Yeah, the, the... <laughs> Forget all of that. But do remember a happy place. Yes, the book today is Happy Place, uh, the newest book by Emily Henry, and promises to be a good one. Promises, promises. This episode, I mean, we've both already read the book, and it's, it's great. A, it's a good one. Ah! So. What have you been doing besides reading the book since we last spoke to well, our lovely audience? I haven't really been up too much besides working. I did go to a birthday party in which I did pet three different dogs. Ooh. And it oh, wow, it's great. What it's size dogs? All large dogs, and they're the kind of dogs where if you even make eye contact, they're beelining for you for a pet. That which is so nice. Is my favorite thing. I and especially where like, um, I've got like a, a grandma talking to me, and I'm feeling socially anxious. I, I pet a dog, and it takes all of the anxiety out of it for me. So it's been proven that really is true. Pet a dog, and your stress goes down. Unless you're afraid of dogs. Yeah, then it, okay, don't <laughs> don't pet a dog then, unless you're ready for a challenge. Maybe you are, I don't know. <laughs> well, what have you been up to? Uh, same sorts of things, just living my life. I would like to say that our lovely friends, Britt and Amanda, mm. not only left the first haikus, and they were beautiful, Yeah, but also... They watched our podcast on YouTube, and then Brit's water broke. So I'm going to count that as a win, perhaps, for us. Like, you're, like our stuff is so good that it just... Yeah. It just blows it birthed a baby. Mind. It births babies. It just is yeah. groundbreaking. So, Mazel tov, friends. Yes. Congratulations on your baby. Good job. Yes. Ladies, you rock. So. With that, I mean, happy place. That's appropriate. Yeah, and like friends and stuff. That's on theme. Oh, friends. Friends are great. Yeah. So, um, first we'll jump into Emily Henry, who, so I believe this is her sixth book, but yeah. she kind of had like a, a renaissance sort of moment when she came out with, um, what is it? Beach Read? Beach Read. Uh, five stars. So good. Um, she's fantastic, really. And all of her books since then, which this is the fourth book after Beach Read, well, including Beach Read. Let's not get into semantics. Math is not my strong Say suit. Say Beach Read again. Beach Read. Beach Tree. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, but fabulous, fabulous stuff. This is a bestseller since it came out. It's really topping the charts. The cover is beautiful. I mean, this pink. That's, well, that's what, did you, her website, this is gorgeous. her website is lovely. Everything is so The pink aesthetic. of the website, it the just, fonts. Yeah. It's, what is this for me? Yes, it is. You cool. I, already, it too. I already looked at it when I read it, but, um, I saw online, she sold over 2.4 million books. Oh, wow. And you can tell why, but, uh, it's, yeah, that doesn't, it's, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Her, her website said that she lives in Cincinnati and Kentucky. 
She's a Midwest gal. Mm -hmm. I thought she kind of looked like the Swamp Witch in Coven. Oh, I could see that. Yeah. Like, like more of a horse girl Swamp Witch. But, uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know. I, she's very pretty. Yeah. She seems cool. She seems like a, like a good friend. Well, Smiley, like, but deep. I would assume I like from that. the dialogue of the book, she's probably fun to talk to. Yeah. So, but uh, this book published April 2023, so super duper recent, and look how big it is right now. It is. And, I mean, I just saw a lot of fantastic reviews. I love everyone's pictures on Instagram with this book, like, poolside. Ugh. The pink with a pool, it just really, it really looks good. So keep it up. I can see you liking it. <laughs> it's just, it's a vibe. So, so uh, why don't you give us a summary of this lovely book? Well, this book, so obviously it's kind of like it's fiction, but it's like romance and also I think humor. So that's good. Humor Let me, for sure. I saw a great summary online. This says... A couple who broke up months ago makes a pact to pretend to still be together for their annual week-long vacation with their best friends. Ooh. I thought that was a good summary because it just... I like that it's brief. I like that it's brief to the point. Also, I like that it's like, um, it doesn't give really anything away because in this book, I didn't expect there to be like more, uh, I don't want to call them twists because it's not necessarily a twist, but I didn't expect there to be things that I wasn't expecting. And there was. There's some surprises. Yeah. Which I quite liked. Yeah. Because they were, she's a punchy writer. Yeah. They were, they were the right, um, level to, to match the rest of the book. So. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So. Along, I mean, the book is fantastic. It's like you said, the dialogue's great. It's very funny. It's like a light, it's the best combination of like a light read, but it is also bringing in some like actually deep topics. So it's like you feel like you're reading something that is a little bit heavier than just like a romance. Oh, definitely. To just call it a romance is, I think, doing it a disservice. Um, probably like a good theme that I really liked from it was like realizing that you have to live your life for yourself and that like no one else can tell you what that means. Definitely. I think that a lot of people do feel the need to keep up appearances and like do the things that their parents have laid out for them. Or just anybody. I, I saw or just thing, societal pressure. I saw a thing online the other day where somebody was like I feel like I'm doing a to-do list, but I don't know whose list it is. And it's like, that's so true, because it's like, you know, when you really stop and think, why am I where I'm at? Is it because I really want this? Or because, yeah, like, my parents wanted it, or I'm trying to make somebody proud, or this or that, where it's like, what do you want? Yeah, and definitely don't do that. Live for yourself. Well, what makes you happy? Just, yeah, think about what makes you happy. Cause I heard somebody on Instagram the other day say... When you're not sure about those things, go back to, like, what you used to like to do in childhood. We've mm. said, like, 74 times, which is now the drinking game. Yes. Don't drink. Don't do drink. Don't drink at every time do we say, you like, <laughs> you're going to be. No. I don't think that's a good idea. Because mm -mm -mm -mm. we both say it many times, but. It was Brie Ellis, the gardener, who made a little video about going back to things that were enjoyable for you as a child. So if you like to, she said she liked to play outside a lot, mm -hmm. which I think almost all of us did, uh, except for the Gen Zers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but she found that with gardening, it, it brought that back a lot. And if you like to draw, start drawing and just doing things for fun instead of trying to monetize everything that you do as a hobby. I could see that or even just like not having a hobby and like, you know, how could you not have a hobby? Some people... No, I, that's... If you don't have a I, hobby, I don't know how you found YouTube, because no, that's a yeah, hobby. I know. I, I, wonder, I wonder what they do. I, I used to work with someone, and I was like, yeah, like, what do you do outside of... And he was just like, oh, nothing. Just... And I'm like, what do you... Go home and sit in I a feel chair? Like that's a secret, secret hobby. I don't think so. I think he goes home, and he sits in a chair, and then he waits the appropriate amount of time, and then he comes back to work the next day, and that's just... He doesn't sleep. No. He just sits. Uh-huh. And he stares at a wall. He's a robot. I was like, do you not watch, like, it boggles my mind when people are like, I don't really watch movies. I don't watch movies. Oh, what? 
The okay. The people that I know and like who say that it makes sense for them because they are so like bow, 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 like vibrant doing stuff. I see that they don't have the want but or attention span to watch a movie. You've never seen a movie. Well, maybe they've seen a movie. I don't know. But uh, who among us has not watched Moana? I mean, <laughs> probably yeah. I, um, another thing I liked from this was that you can't, like, other people can't really make you happy until you yourself are happy. Oh, for sure. That's always, like, a great theme anyway, just to live with, but... It's a hard lesson to actually learn, I think. It def definitely, definitely. And, like, I think more people are, like, more, I guess, susceptible to it, where they just, like, need the crave that, like... I don't know, connection with another human being, which, I mean, who doesn't want that? I get, well, I guess it depends. But it depends for, on the, the person. for the most part, like most people just craving that from other people where it's like, you got to give that to yourself first. And like, I've definitely learned that over the years. Although I've kind of always liked being alone where like, I don't know, you're more of a relationship person, I think. I, but I truly also like to be alone most of the time. Maybe that's why it works. So yeah. I am lucky to have found somebody who is similar, where we both have a lot of hobbies, and, and we like, both spend a lot yeah. of time doing our own thing, and then... Healthy alone time. Yeah, like a lot of alone time, which is r honestly really nice. And someone who's not intimidated by sister uh, time. That's true. It takes up, my goodness, this takes up a lot of time. It takes up a lot of time. What can we do? Um, Nothing different. Don't change a thing. <laughs> you out there, don't do it. Well, but again, reflect. Nothing's wrong with reflecting. Definitely. I oh, think that... Alone in a room in the dark, and you're tr actually you're turning the light on and off manically, and you're just reflecting on your inner. I think that's going to bring up other things for you. Yeah, and then write those in the comments. Don't do it. I think specifically in this situation, I don't think I could do it. I don't... I understand why the characters are keeping up the appearance of their relationship for their friends when they go on this, like, you know, like, reunion-y kind of vacation together. Uh, but I don't know. Like, when my relationship's done... It's, the bridge yeah. is terribly burnt, and no one could even look back well, if you wanted to. Well, even times where you've gone back and dated, and I just mean the royal we've are, when you go back and date people who you've dated before, it just kind of hurts. Like, it's not even fun anymore. It just kind of is sad in a way, but personally. Like, when I've seen people again, and then I'm just like, this is just kind of sad. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't like it. I mean, <laughs> I think that there's definitely some second... I mean, that's a trope that I do like, a second chance romance, but it's very situational. Yeah. And really, I think mine kind of is. That Phil and I had gone out a few times when we were younger. Mm, I mean more but of like, like... as like, you know, as adults, we seriously... And my, mine's more of like... A dated and now we're in a relationship. Dated someone for a while and then you break up and then you see them again and it's just kind of sad. Yeah. What's the unfinished business there? Usually there is none. Again, just, just say what say what you're gonna say. But yeah, <laughs> I think ours is more of a trash bags at midnight, no looking back kind of deal. It um, was taught to us, and that is how it's been. Frankly, they started it. I think, though, we've both grown up a lot since those oh, absolutely. times. Oh, absolutely. And it's not really a problem anymore. Yeah. No, we're trash bags during the day. We're daytime trash bags mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. People can know. People can't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, and then... I also, this is just, I was just writing down the themes that I kind of like, but that sometimes people do things that seem thoughtless or like somebody else is doing something and you're like, why is this person doing this? Like they don't give a shit and blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, it's so hard to see others' perspectives on things. And I guess that's what it is where you like think someone like, 
I guess you're projecting your thoughts onto another person. Do you mean like the characters in the book? Or just people yes, in life too? Talking, yes, this book we're talking about. I mean the book, but also like how it applies to life. That is, yeah. it is so, I mean, if you uh, just watch the Addie LaRue episode, I think that we were judging her a little bit harshly, maybe. I don't think so. You're contradicting yourself there, buddy. Because you just said, let people be how they're going to be. No, that's not what I said. I said sometimes people do things and you're not sure why they're doing them, but they have a reason for it. I feel I stand by what I said with that stuff because, like, no, that's what I mean. Shorten that book. Yeah, shorten it. Anyway, this book look, you could have made this longer. I'd keep reading. Actually, yes, with this book I would. I like understand it, yeah. that it takes a lot of work to publish, but if you could just do like two a year instead of one, yeah, Emily Henry. I, God, so many books like that. But don't do that. It's better to wait. <laughs> I know you'll leave us wanting more. But yeah, don't listen to what I'm asking oh. for. But. Yeah, like, I don't know, I... I also, like, well, I agree with you. I think that that is a very mature place to get to where you let people do what they're going to do and you accept that you can't change other people. I think you're missing... Aren't you listening? I think that you're not explaining yourself well. I don't think... So. I'm saying that, like, somebody could be, like, trying to get you to do something and you don't know why, but they have a reason. But it's not, like, a mean reason. Or, like, most of the time when people do things, it's not because they're being malicious. I agree with you. I think that most people are not malicious. Except for right now when you're actively ignoring me. Because you hate me. I think that you're saying it from the, like, receiver's perspective that they're, somebody's telling them something. I'm saying it from my perspective because I'm so gosh darn understanding. <laughs> you give, give me an example of what you're saying. Um, so if somebody's like, um, I don't think you should, I, I don't even know. So like if you're going to have a surprise party for somebody and they're like, I'm going to go climb a mountain that weekend. And then they're like, hey, don't do it that weekend. You mean like you're trying that I somebody's think this suddenly is getting more and more confused. All right, everyone, forget everything you heard up until now. I just, I guess, <laughs> I meant like you know, when you think your friend is doing something, like when you're mad at them, it's hard to step back and be like, oh, they did it because they love me. To have some perspective. Yes. To think of things from somebody else's perspective. Yes. See, we got there. Yeah, it's fine. I'm so I don't know. I, no, I, I, I think no, I, I know what you mean. I'm there, I'm there. I think that it kind of ties in with that. Another theme that I really liked from this is talking about your platonic friendships and your female friendships and how you might think that you're like helping somebody by acting the way you think that that they want you to act. That's literally what I just. That's what I meant. <laughs> Okay. I'm saying how much you hurt other people I guess, by, yeah. like, hiding parts of your true self. Okay, that's what I meant, too, where it's like... Unless you're doing, like, a sting operation. Yeah, unless you're a spy. That you're specifically... Not even for a spy. Well, that's but if kind you're of just, important. If you're having a Slytherin moment and you're, like, you know, playing a role, that's different. I mean, like, yeah, not you're real friends. Manipulating yourself. people. You snake. Um, yes. You that's, wouldn't understand. That's sort of what I meant too, yeah, where it's just like, no, I guess that's the opposite of it because like you're saying you shouldn't assume that your friends are going to like judge you for stuff or they won't understand. Because I actually like that too, where you just like, you're assuming someone's not going to understand, but most of the time they are going to understand because so we're all true. human at the end of the day. Like, And that it's not for you to make something palatable for somebody else. And not for you to assume that they're not going to find it palatable. Yeah. Because, like, man, I guess yeah, we all do it, I guess. Because, like, I find myself doing it a lot, too, where I'm just, like, assuming someone won't like it. It's funny, even, like, my friend Kelly the other day, we were, I mean, we were drunkenly having this conversation. But we were both like, I wanted to text you something and I didn't because I thought it sounded crazy. And she said same and I was like isn't it funny the conversations we don't have because I assume that I'm gonna like annoy you or something 
And then I should just send it because she'd be totally fine with it. Just send it. She'd be I happy to hear from you. It's nervous, nervous friendship because we're new, newish friends. You'll feel nervous until you're better friends, and yeah. then it's fine. Oh, I, that's what I think. That conversation took us to a new, a new place. Unless it didn't, and you're listening to this, Kelly. In which case, I'm cool. What do you? <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> With that, we are going to move on to our game, which is my game preparation for you this week. Mm. I'm gonna say situations. And I'm going to have you respond with whether or not you could pretend in the situation that it wasn't happening. That you're going to keep up your status quo. All right, first situation. A sensitive family member cooks you a delicious meal that is not delicious. Oh, no. I... Are they standing there watching me eat it? Yes. Oh, no. Wringing their hands on their apron. Oh, I would eat it. Honestly. Unless it was like... Oh. Are you going to say it's great? Yes. No. Um, God. No, I won't. I'd be like, that was weird. Not weird. Mm -hmm. I'd probably be honest, honestly, because like, I, I have a hard time not being honest. And I'd probably just be like, oh, it's not my favorite. It's still pretty good. How about if you have gone on a horrible date, it was so bad, and then it turns out later on you've gotten into, uh, you know, new relationships, new friendships, your... Okay, our camera shut off there for a second, but we are back, and we're going to jump back into the game. I'm going to cut all of this up. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> but look at how the camera... Same. Hi. Okay, so the next scenario is the bad date that you've gone on. It turns out it's your friend's boyfriend. If Are you going to pretend that you didn't go on a date? Oh, I, no, I, I would totally be honest. Also, like I said, if it's a personality clash, yeah, maybe they'll get along better. If he did something weird then I will wait for him to leave so we don't get murdered and then be like, uh-uh, no, no, that guy, he, he no good. Did yeah, something weird to tell your friend. Oh, yeah. Oh. And it would be weirder if they found out later. That's super weird, too, yeah. All right, third scenario. You're watching an old woman steal candy bars in a grocery store. I also steal candy bars. No, you don't. We do it together. No, you don't. And then she and I. <laughs> Would you act away. like nothing was happening? Yeah. Would you wink at her? Um, I wouldn't wink because then, once the security guards are tackling her at the exit, I'm compliant. But if I didn't see anything, I guess it also depends on what store we're in. If we're in a privately owned, like gourmet candy store, yeah, I'm telling. If we're in a Walmart, what did I see? Right. I right. gotta check myself out here, so pretty much what she's taken is my salary. They so. factored that into their prices. I hope she likes them. <laughs> she has to do it. Yeah. Well, and that's like, you know, the other thing of, I don't want to get attacked by her because you're stealing candy next thing you know. Knife fight in the parking lot. Yeah, I would never stop somebody having a moment in the wild. What can, we get, what can I do? I'm you not, do you have I don't, they got insurance. I'm not security. I'm not, I'm not getting killed over candy. At least. Don't get killed for candy. Yeah. <laughs> killed for candy. It sounds like a dateline. That would be the title of it too. And I'd be so embarrassed and it'd be like killed uh, by candy. And then everybody be like, yeah, she had too much candy. And then you find out later that I was just murdered regular. It was a knife fight. Yeah. And I don't need that embarrassment. That would be terribly embarrassing. Yeah, I don't need that, because I don't think anybody would be shocked, but... Man, I love candy. <laughs> Next scenario. Someone farts in an elevator, and you've got like ten floors to go. I could not not laugh, but I also don't want to breathe in air, so I don't know what would happen. Gonna suck down that air faster. I would, I would laugh. I, I would, would laugh. turtle right up into my shirt. <laughs> I feel like you keep a bag of fresh air, just in case. Always do that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, I would laugh. I it's can't. gotta be a plastic bag and not a paper bag. That's the only acceptable use for plastic. 
fresh air bags. Mm -hmm. And then you keep them next to your COVID bags of air. Right. For the enemies. Yeah. Okay. For when you're in yoga. <laughs> you don't know what kind of air you're going to need. I just, I can't not laugh at a fart. And that maybe the, maybe I'm immature, but I don't care. Even as a healthcare provider, we still laugh. It's funny. It's funny. Like, what? Uh, it's funny. I don't care. And yeah. you know what? Loosen up a little bit, but and not it, your BH. <laughs> and if you came to this podcast for some classy book talks, you're in the wrong place. I don't know what gave you that impression. And I don't it know. It was the yeah. cheese pairing. <laughs> it tricked them. It tricked them. But now you're here. Just download it and you know what I mean? It's fire. Here. Yeah. Uh, so okay, last scenario. One minute with night cheese. You're having a day at the beach and you see that a dog takes a shit in somebody's shoe. I go in the other one. I void into the other shoe. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. One turd shoe, one pea shoe. How are they gonna. They can't catch me and the dog. You know yeah, what I mean? That's debatable. Especially if they don't have any shoes. Or, or if they put them on, they're sliding around. Alright, you're getting ridiculous. We are going to be moving on to our next segment, everyone's favorite, the haiku and cheese pairing. And if it's not your favorite, maybe say something. Don't let us be fools. Yeah. If you hate it, just tell us. Yeah. Leave it as a comment. Because <laughs> these haikus don't write themselves. Yeah. You think you can do better, Brittany? Oh, uh, wait. Brittany did leave us a haiku. Yeah. And hers was good. Uh, I just wanted to pick a random name, but... Well, Maybe that blew up in our faces. Um, do you want me to go first, or do you want to go first? You go first. Okay, okay. Sometimes we lose things. Communication is key. They always come home. I like that. And I paired it with feta cheese because feta to me is like a happy, light, like healthy cheese. And it's also delicious. Everybody likes it. It's a very popular cheese. But it's, you know, like light and fun. It's a fun cheese. I could see that for... Ghost. Even just with the cover, feta That's would look I mean. good. Feta's just... Who does... I love feta cheese. I love a Greek salad. I love feta. Mm -hmm. Always good. Alright, well, mine is... You rob yourself if you don't share your heart out loud. Friends are made for that. Did you... Did you write this when you were 15? I did. I've been saving it all Share these years. <laughs> these 20 years. <laughs> you just whispered to yourself. That's mm -hmm. funny. That's actually what I wrote on my mirror. And I Share, Share your high self. Every day. Yeah. So. The cheese that I picked is Pepper Jack. Because some parts of this book are a little spicy. Yeah, they were a little spicy. Um... And like Pepper Jack, it's not the spiciest spice I've ever spiced. But it's still a fun party cheese. It's always say, on yeah. a cheese tray at a party. That's so because true. Because it's, this is enjoyable. You could have some Pepper Jack that's, and you'd have a good time doing it. That's some top tier cheese. It's just, it's good. It's a classic. You no, know that's a good choice. Yeah, there you go. I like, and the, uh, you know, with these kinds of books, uh, if you're looking for a spice, spice, uh, this is a good, it's, I think, quite palatable to anybody, even if you're not looking for a spice, spice. This is not outright smut book. Mm -mm. It's done very tastefully, mm. but she's not doing fade to blacks where you're just like, come on. Yeah. You know, I thought you're it making was this movie rated PJ and that is boring. I still was, I read it at work and I still like when people would walk behind me, I'd be like hiding it a little bit. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. You don't want somebody looking in your eyes. It's none of their business. When you're reading a romance. Yeah, exactly. So I, I liked that. I will also say that we are going to have to do some cheese education. So if anyone knows of a cheese course that's <laughs> available for free, I feel like I've <laughs> let these ladies know. I'm you know, I thought that I love cheese, and I do, but yeah, would it... I just feel like there's so many cheeses out there. This does make you question how much you really know how about How much things. cheese do you know? No, I, yes, I also thought about that. Cause do you know a monger? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Am I even... I don't. Am I cheese I wish crazy? I did. No. 
I would say that I'm cheese crazy yes. and it's starting to seem like in a limited way. Actually that's true, like eating a whole log of mozzarella by myself counts as cheese crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps that has happened. <laughs> So I definitely, you know, as far as this book is concerned, I'd say absolutely go for it. It was such a fun read and especially like, I feel like it was a long enough book that it's not like it's a quick read, but it's like a solid good story. Um, the dialogue I thought was great. Um, I thought it was really funny, which is, you know, not like bust the seam funny, but like clever. Clever. It's clever. That's it's just word. really enjoyable and, and believable. That, yes, it that's, was. It was definitely believable. That's what it is. It's like it's funny, but it's believable funny. Because sometimes you read dialogue and you're like, "This is, that is just a stand-up routine." But these ones are. I think a lot of the, just aspects of this book are very relatable. Yeah, I like it. It's great. You should get it. I think that a lot of different kinds of people would enjoy this too. I was about to say that too. Like even if you like horror or like this or that, like I think you'd like this book because it's just like a good book. It's a human book. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Book for humans, not a book for cats. No. <laughs> do, do cats have books? Anyway, yeah, that brings us to time. our last segment. Grazie and goodbye. Yeah. Preston, this week what are you grateful for? So, and I know this is going to sound funny, but I read down Facebook just for the sheer fact of I'm in a couple of different groups on Facebook and I've been chatting more with people I guess and it's actually been really fun and like I don't necessarily like seeing the fighting about things and it's kind of annoying after a while where people are just arguing about like the stupidest things but when you can have like those good conversations with like another person online and it's just funny and light and you both like the same thing and you just connect over that a little bit like I just I really have been enjoying that and that's what my Facebook has been so like less angries except on the Disney forums because man they are just like it I don't the know. happiest place on earth the those people are angry yeah the infighting is cutthroat wild it's just like why are you so mad but it's whatever because like you know what I just ignore it move on and just talk to like cool cool people who like the same thing that's what it's all about how about you what do you grunt say for uh this week I said I was grateful for Philip my fella he I, yeah. has been having a tough time with his back but uh, a skateboarding injury that skateboarding maniac but uh, all of the time that we've been and I mean we've been together forever but it's just been uh, you know really great hanging out lately and just uh, having great communication and he's a stand-up guy I think he's really cool yeah I'll second that he also is very handsome and I'm not uh, saying this just because it's a romance book not because it's a love story but I am in love <laughs> But, no, I, uh, I wish I didn't do a witch cackle after that. <laughs> it makes it less Yes, cool. it makes it really believable. Um, no, yeah, Phil is pretty great. Yeah, he's a good one. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. I am going to invite you all to not only tell five people about this podcast, but also check it out, YouTube, Instagram, everywhere. Like, subscribe, download, follow, whatever mode is required. That's what I need you to do for us. Yes, we have a, we have a presence pretty much anywhere and like it would be super anywhere duper everywhere. appreciated. Very appreciated. But also for fun. Look how much fun this is. Huh? Yeah, this plane is taken off and I want you to get on. <laughs> oh God. As everyone's just pausing. Cancel. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's not but fine. join us again next week. You're gonna like our next episode. We've got a lot of books that are rocking stories coming up this season. Uh, yeah. And with that.